In this video, I'm going to be discussing TPI two-stroke crankcase pressure sensor issues and how to fix them. TPI two-strokes use a pressure sensor to monitor the internal crankcase pressure. And based on that uh, sensor information, uh, the ECU can make uh, fueling adjustments uh, depending on engine load. On year model 18 and 19 TPIs, including KTM and Husqvarna, uh, there is a single pressure sensor. So when the engine is not running, uh, the pressure sensor reads atmospheric pressure. And when the engine is running, uh, it monitors the crankcase pressure. And then starting from year model 2020, an additional pressure sensor was added. So uh, year model 2020 and 21, KTM, Gas Gas, and Husqvarna have a dedicated ambient pressure sensor and also a dedicated crankcase pressure sensor. Here you can see my 2021 KTM 300 TPI and you can see there's a hose going from the rear of the crankcase up to the pressure sensor which is housed in a tray underneath the oil tank. If a problem occurs with the crankcase pressure sensor while riding uh, it would typically uh, result in uh, erratic engine behavior and uh, often with the engine bogging. And uh, while out riding uh, last weekend on my 300 TPI, I experienced uh, really bad bogging twice. My pressure sensors acting up, probably blocked. Oh dear, it's not revving out. And to have a better look at the mounting, I removed the tray from underneath the oil tank and uh, you can see the two pressure sensors. So this is the ambient pressure sensor and this is the crankcase pressure sensor. And the sensor used is exactly the same for both of the sensors. And this is the other side of the tray. Um, so this is the crankcase pressure sensor and you can see the uh, hose which connects to the rear of the crankcase and the ambient press pressure sensor has this uh, boot connected to it. One common issue that can occur is the uh, hose and the engine fitting uh, can become clogged with uh, oily residue. Um, the internal diameter is quite small, uh, so it doesn't require much to uh, block them. And if it does block it, then obviously the pressure sensor can't read the crankcase pressure correctly, and it will typically uh, result in a bog at higher RPM. I did make a video about this uh, previously and I'll put a link to that video in case you want to watch it in the description of this one. Um, but as a first step, it's always a good idea to remove these components and check they're clear and uh, clean them out. So that's what I'm going to do first. Okay, so I've got some parts cleaner and the engine fitting. I'm going to squirt some cleaner through and uh, see how much dirt comes out. I have it inspected it internally and it's not blocked. and it actually appears to be quite clean. Um, so I don't really think, yeah, it's uh, not really getting much dirt out at all. Um, so that, that looks pretty good. And using the same method, I'm going to clean the hose out as well. And uh, that had a little more um, dirt than the fitting, but uh, certainly not blocked. And I did look through it and it would look clear. Um, so it doesn't really look as though, certainly there's not a blockage now. I don't know whether there was before, but uh, it looks okay now. And I would recommend cleaning these parts out uh, internally, um, probably once every 40 hours or so is a, a good idea. Okay, so next I'm going to inspect the tray and also the pressure sensor. And I do know from reading um, on some of the Facebook groups that uh, some people have um, found what they think is a leak either between the tray and the pressure sensor or between the tray fitting and the hose. And uh, I'm going to in inspect everything carefully and see whether I can find an issue. Okay, so I've removed the crankcase pressure sensor from the tray and below the O-ring uh, it should be sealed and uh, should be, you know, clean. Um, I was expecting maybe there was some oily residue, but uh, looking carefully at it, it looks as though it's got dust on it. Um, I'm not exactly sure whether this dust came from when I removed it from the tray or whether dust had been getting in there. Um, but yeah, it, that is of concern and uh, 
indicates a possible leak from somewhere. Okay, so now I'm inspecting the tray and uh, you can see here the hose fitting uh, to the pressure sensor which is on the other side. And when you inspect the fitting, you want to make sure that this area is not cracked. So I actually tried uh, blowing through it. I put a hose on it and uh, put my finger the other side to see whether I could hear any leaks. And I couldn't. And I can't see any cracks, so that looks okay. Um, but what's not so good is the hose fitting itself is actually bent over this way. Um, I don't really like that. And also, um, probably if I do this, you can see better. Uh, there's a barb um, molded in, but the barb only goes halfway round or a third of the way round. So this area has a barb. This area, there's no barb at all. Um, so I'm not sure how well that seals. So uh, not very happy with that. And then on the other side of the tray, you can see the area the pressure sensor sits in. Uh, so this portion of the pressure sensor goes down inside here. And uh, you can see there's an O-ring here. It's important this O-ring seals well um, on the uh, plastic part here. So you want to carefully inspect inside here, make sure there's no scratches and that it's not deformed or you won't get a good seal. So some ideas for workarounds if you do suspect that you um, don't have a good seal and you think it's leaking uh, somewhere. So um, I know some people connect the hose directly to the pressure sensor. Um, that might result in a, a good seal, um, but this portion of the pressure sensor is not very long, um, so it's possibly quite difficult to keep the hose attached to it. Also, uh, this portion where the O-ring is, um, it goes quite thin, well the same diameter as here, and uh, with stress it could be uh, likely to uh, cause a crack and uh, a leak. So I. Personally, I don't really like the idea of connecting a hose directly to the pressure sensor. I think uh, long-term reliability might be an issue. And then if you suspect that uh, a leak is formed between the tray and the uh, pressure sensor where the O-ring is, um, you want to carefully inspect the O-ring, make sure it's not damaged. Um, I know some people have tried using different dimension O-rings. Um, I did measure the O-ring and I've measured uh, both the uh, diameter of the pressure sensor where it sits and the bore and I think the o-ring is uh, sized correctly so I don't think you need a larger one to create a good seal but uh, what you could try doing is applying some uh, silicone grease to the o-ring and that would certainly um, help create a better seal and also um, reduce the chance of any damage occurring when you install um, or remove the pressure sensor. So I think it's a good idea to use a small amount of uh, silicone grease. Definitely make sure none gets in to the pressure sensor uh, opening here. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's a good idea. But overall, I don't really like uh, the design and quality of uh, the tray in this area. So uh, what I've decided to do is to modify it. And I'm going to uh, cut this out and uh, create a different fitting out of brass, uh, which the pressure sensor will f sit in and uh, hopefully create a very good uh, reliable seal. Okay, so here's the fitting I made. Um, it's made from a solid piece of brass, uh, so there are not going to be any leaks. Uh, the bore um, I reamed to 7 millimeters to ensure a good fit on the pressure sensor O-ring. Uh, very nice uh, smooth finish um, and then the hose connection I made the same dimensions as the uh, stock crankcase connector um, so that should be no problem either and then I threaded it so from the other side of the uh, tray I can uh, I actually made a, a nut I decided to use a fine pitch thread 1.25 and it's M12 and uh, it's not a stock size, so I, I made this uh, nut out of aluminium and a washer to go with it as well. So I'll assemble that now and uh, see how it goes. And here you can see the fitting I made uh, installed in the tray. Um, I tightened down the nut and thread locked it after I installed the uh, pressure sensor. I, you need to be careful that uh, the fitting is centered correctly and doesn't apply any uh, stress to the pressure sensor. The uh, same applies if you're uh, installing or removing pressure sensor from the standard tray. 
you want to make sure that uh, you install it um, carefully and don't put any stress onto the pressure sensor or you can easily damage it. And then on the other side, um, you can see the fitting and the bore, uh, as I mentioned, I reamed it. Uh, so it's a nice accurate bore and nice and smooth. Shouldn't ensure a good seal. And then uh, the area underneath the fitting, um, I used an end mill to relieve it. So uh, this surface height is the same as the original tray and the pressure sensor can uh, sit nice and flat on it. And I'm going to reinstall the pressure sensor. I'm using a new pressure sensor and I've applied some silicon grease to the O-ring. And uh, as I mentioned, you want to make sure that uh, the pressure sensor goes in straight and you don't apply any uh, undue force to the pressure sensor or you can easily damage it. And just slide it in, make sure it goes in um, nice and straight. And that made a nice click. And then you have to install the screw. Okay, so I've installed the hose and it's ready for reinstallation into the bike. Okay, so I've reinstalled the tray and I've connected up the crankcase pressure sensor hose to the engine. Uh, one tip regarding the fitting on the engine when you reinstall it is to use some medium strength thread lock uh, to ensure a good seal and no leaks. Um, I was going to do some video of installing the tray, but it's very difficult to show on video because it's so tight. Uh, it's not particularly difficult, it's just a little bit fiddly. Uh, there's three screws which hold the tray onto the oil tank from underneath. Uh, if you look at un underneath, uh, you'll see them straight away. Uh, to give me more room when I was taking the tray out, um, I actually flipped the subframe up and I uh, disconnected the throttle body from the reed valve and uh, flipped it up and that gave me a lot more room and it, I think it's probably pretty much impossible to remove the tray if you don't do that. So keep that in mind and uh, just go slowly, don't damage anything. Uh, when you've reinstalled everything, check all your electrical connections, so the pressure sensors, also the um, oil pump, if you disconnected that, uh, reconnect it, connect up the hose, make sure there's no air bubbles in the oil hose. If there are bubbles, uh, you can flush them out using the dongle. Okay, so I've got the bike fully assembled now. I just did a quick test start and it starts and idles fine, which is good. But I won't really know whether the crankcase pressure sensor is uh, fully fixed or not until I give it a proper ride. So the next video you'll see will be me riding the bike tomorrow and I'll comment on how it's going. <laughs> Yeah, it's pulling really strong, so uh, the crankcase pressure sensor work has really paid off and uh, it's running perfectly now, so I'm really happy. One thing to note about the OEM pressure sensors is they seem to be in short supply and back ordered uh, most places. So I think uh, for anyone with a TPI it's a good idea to have a spare one, so go ahead and order one. I know uh, a lot of the car manufacturers use the same parts, so you might want to look up the number for an automotive one. <laughs> Yeah, it's pulling really well now. Um, definitely no problem with the pressure sensor, so uh, that's definitely fixed. And uh, I'll be sure to uh, make an update video if I experience another issue with the pressure sensor, uh, so everyone knows. Uh, but right now, uh, it's running well, and I'm really happy.